Good morning, welcome back to the channel. Jordan here from Artisan Electrics, the ultimate EV charging specialists. And today we are in sunny Londinium, London. I'm doing a job for one of my YouTube subscribers who's contacted me because he's got an e-golf and he wants it to be charged up from pure sunshine using his Zappy, a, a Zappy charger. So I'm here today and um, it's a little bit of an interesting one because I'm going to be using a cable that I've never used before. It's a special cable called the EV Ultra cable, which has a data cable and a power cable in one. It's like an armored cable with both data and power in one. And that enables us to connect the CT hardwired using this cable without having to run a separate data cable. So going to be interesting to see how we get on with that cable today. It's expensive cable, but it's supposed to be sort of the best thing out there for these kind of situations so let me get into it and i'll show you the job as always if you enjoy my videos don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and if you subscribe for free and click the notification bell then you won't miss out on future videos let's get into it so here we have the entrance to the house and we've got this kind of bay window and the customer wants the charge point just sort of discreetly located here on this uh, brick plinth so i'm going to put it on there here's the zappy black tethered and basically the cable route is gonna come down from the Zappi around here behind um, this sort of metal gate post. Gonna clip it along, all the way along here to the electrics, which are basically on the other side of this wall. So you've got the electric meter here, gas meter. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that does, so I'm gonna have a look at that. But basically the, the consumer unit is just on the other side there. So it should be fairly, a fairly straightforward cable run. Just got to figure out exactly where it is. Should be able to see where those gas pipes come through and hopefully figure it out from there. So I'll show you the inside. So in here we have the existing consumer unit. It's a nice metal consumer unit already. And interestingly, it's got a main switch and lots of RCBOs. Havel's is not a brand that I'd really come across before particularly uh, but thanks to circuit breaker specialist good old Uncle Phil I've he sent me a replacement a, a new breaker so that's just going to go in that spare slot there so we've got our new circuit for that this is the solar stuff so what we're going to do is put a CT on the solar um, so that basically we can read how much power is coming in from the solar We'll put a grid CT on so we can measure how much power is coming, um, being used by the, from the grid. And then that will enable us to basically charge the car from pure solar if, if desi desired. So I'm going to take this trunking off because I need to figure out. Um, yeah, here we go. Basically, we need to figure out the cable route. Um, probably drill through the wall, come straight into this trunking, hopefully. And what I might do is terminate the armoured cable on the other side in a whisker box and just come through in twin and earth. Looks like these are the solar cables, so I should be able to put a CT on one of these and then that will just measure the input from the solar. So let's get into it. Right, so let me show you this EV Ultra cable because it's pretty special stuff and this is the first time that I've worked with it. So I'm quite excited to see what it looks like inside. So it's basically steel wire armoured as we would normally have for these kind of situations. But what's inside is a little bit extra special. So we've got our our power 
as normal, six mil. But then in here, we've got a data cable as well, which is like a twisted pair, which we can basically use to connect our CTs. And of course it's shielded as it should be because it needs to be protected from the actual, um, what do you call it, magnetic field that is created by the actual power cables. So here we go, it's just got this shielded twisted pair within, which can then be used to send the signal for the current tra transformers. So I've just been measuring up and basically where the tails come through in the back of the meter box um, is here. And if I measure about a meter from there, it takes me to just the other side of the gas meter box, which is where I want to go. So what I'm going to do is just drill a hole in here and then drill down at an angle. And then I will come out in the brick on the other side, just to one side of the meter box for the gas and just a little bit lower than that. And then I'll be able to put a whisker box on for the cable and then clip the cable down and along the wall. And I think that's gonna be the neatest way to do it really. And then all of the cabling will just be hidden within this um, trunking, which will be really nice. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole in here through the PVC first. Then it's plasterboard, I think, maybe dot and dab or something. So I'm gonna just go through that with a wood bit until I get to the brick. Then I've got my pilot bit, my long drill bit, which you guys know very well if you're a regular watcher of the channel, these things come in handy a lot. I'm gonna use that to drill through the brick at an angle and I'm gonna try and do it without hammer so that I can come out without popping out the brick on the other side. Then once I'm out with my pilot hole, then I'll go through again with a larger drill that I can bring the six mil cable straight through. I think what I'll do is just terminate the cable, gland it on the other side, but leave the length long enough to pull through all the way into here. And the little two core cable for the CT, the reason that is important is that has to connect to the grid CT, which is in the meter tails for the whole installation, which are actually in this trunking. So hopefully I can clip the grid CT on to this trunking here just within within that that will be then hardwired into the zappy which means that we can put a grid limit on of up to 100 amps because it's a 100 amp main fuse if we use the harvey then it it's only good up to 60 amps really in terms of accuracy for the load limiting function and because this house has got a lot of circuits with a lot of power going on um i i prefer to load limit it at about 95 amps just to avoid any chance of blowing the main fuse. So that's why I'm doing it this hardwired way, whereas usually I would use the Harvey. Um, but I just wanna make sure that we've got the load limiting properly set up here in this particular situation. So I'm gonna get drilling. <laughs> Right, so let's see if we've managed to come out in a reasonable place. Uh, okay, yeah, here. Yeah. And we haven't popped out the brick, so that's good. So uh, I'm happy with that. That's, that's kind of perfect. Just what I said, slightly uh, to the next to the gas meter box, slightly lower. So awesome. So what I'm gonna do now is go through with my larger drill bit, just to open that up. Then we can literally put a whisker box straight over this hole and then take the cable down and just clip it all the way along there to the zappy. So what I decided to do here on this corner is rather than trying to drill behind this and go round at a tight angle and have to chip out some of the bricks because this cable is quite stiff, I decided to drill through here at an angle. So if you can see that, I've drilled through there at an angle and then that will just come nice and smoothly then around the bend here and bend up into the zappy. It's gonna be much neater and I can do a nice smooth angle through there. So again, I've got my pilot drill through. And now I'm just gonna 
open that up a little bit with the um, larger drill here and then that'll be ready to run the cable in. All right, so the cables come through there really nicely. So that's going to be really nice and neat. And basically now all I need to do is do a loop up like that into the zappy and terminate it into the zappy. Now in terms of glands, we can use exactly the same glands on this as we normally would for normal, simple armoured cable, shall we say. So I'm just going to be using a um, CW20 gland pack. It's an outdoor armoured gland pack. Finding my knife. So what we do is we put the shroud over the armoured, just measure it to the right size and then cut it. And it should be fairly tight around the armoured cable so that it doesn't allow water to creep in basically. That's the whole idea of this shroud. Um, and it also just neatens it up. So cut it slightly smaller than the armoured and then just usually twist it on this way just to open it up a little bit, stretch it up a little bit and then twist it on that way. There we go. And then this will just fit over there, just about the right size. And then we can start stripping this back. Right, so we're all connected up at this end and I'm loving this um, this cable to be honest. It's really nice. So this just, I put a bit of heat shrink over the edge just to kind of neat, keep it neat and tidy. And that's just ferreled up there and connected in. I've used one of these earthing nuts just so that I can earth the sheath at this side because it's easier to do it at this side than doing it at the whisker box end. One cleat there. And now what I'm gonna do is just clip this along all the way along here using the Linean uh, super clips and then whisker box on that end and we'll be into the house. Right, so we're getting there. The cable is all installed on the outside, so I'll show you how I've done it. So from the zappy, I've gone down, around in a little bend, and through the wall at an angle, through here, come out there, and then literally just clipped all the way along with the Linean super clips, which I absolutely love. They are so neat and discreet. And then into this box, and basically the inner sheath, I've continued through the hole, and it comes out the other side in the trunking. Right, so in here we've got the consumer unit. I've just put the spare circuit breaker in here ready to go. This is where the cable comes in, straight into that trunking. So I'm gonna just strip that back, take the live neutral and CPC cables into the consumer unit and connect them into this circuit breaker. And then the um, cable for the CT, I'll just joint that in this trunking 
with a couple of Viago connectors and then clip the CT for the mains tails on here and then I will clip the other CT onto the solar pow power cables here and then mount a Harvey underneath which will do the wireless communication for the solar because that's not going to be more than 20 amps so that can be wirelessly communicated to the Zappi but at least the mains tails will be hardwired which means we can measure up to 100 amps on those and we can have accurate load management that way so that if the main um, installation is taking nearly 100 amps it will ramp the charger down to avoid blowing the 100 amp main fuse on the installation. So we are just about done. The Zappi is on and working and tested. And as you can see, there's a little bit of solar just trickling in 0.1 kilowatts. Another 0.1 coming from the grid. The house is using about 0.3 kilowatts. So um, just gonna take a few things now for the OLEV grant, get all the things that I need to claim that grant. And then I am back onto the M11 and on my way home and hopefully it's not as much as a cut of a car park as it was on the way here as always if you've enjoyed my videos don't forget to hit a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell subscription is free and i'll see you on the next one thanks for watching and have a great day